Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Faith and Friends. Welcome also to the month of June. What, Can you June? believe it is June? No. no. It's still May, right? It is June. If your plants are not in the garden yet, it's time <laughs> to get them in there or you'll be harvesting in October. Yeah, how tall are your, uh, what did you plant a few weeks ago? We have. Some corn? We ha No, tomatoes. <laughs> City tomatoes. corn. <laughs> how's that, how's that, how are the tomatoes coming along? You made any salads out of them yet? Uh, you know, my daughters are convinced that they're going to take their tomatoes to the fair. <laughs> now, the tomatoes are not yet in the yeah, ground Yeah, you can yet. take them to the fair. You're going to leave with them. <laughs> take them to the fair. Do you know, how, how much admission do you have to pay for your vegetables at the fair? I don't know. I don't know. That's, do you fry the green tomatoes? Out. Well, that's something we could we could check. Maybe we should do a Facebook no. Friends show on no. tomatoes because we Please, planted no. 15 different kinds of heirloom I'll eat tomatoes. I'll spaghetti sauce. We did striped tomatoes and purple tomatoes and green tomatoes. Wait, wait, wait. wait. There are striped. Purple tomatoes? There are purple tomatoes, yes. You, you sure you just weren't looking at them through sunglasses? I think we even planted zebra tomatoes. See, now you're just making things up. <laughs> Next, they're going to say they planted Liger tomatoes. <laughs> I think we better move on to things other than tomatoes, though. Tomatoes, it just... Maybe in a future episode, it'll be all about the... Well, will we have a tomato show or tomato show? There Either way, coming there up on today's show, Faith and the Indy 500. Andy recently talked with the chaplain of the Racing Classic, and there's a brand new program here on TV44 that introduces you to the beauty of historic churches and... We're talking water, bottled water, water hydration, and Jesus being the living water. And on that note, we bring you the verse of the day. We are in John chapter 4, which finds us in the middle of the story of Jesus at the well meeting with the Samaritan woman. We pick it up at verse 10. Jesus answered and said, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Verse 11 says, The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Verse 12, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus then answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will never thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him, or I should say will, now will never thirst again, but the water that I give him will become a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. That is the water that Jesus gives. Certainly water here on earth is very important and we're going to see throughout the, the show just how important water is to hydration and to keeping ourselves healthy. But the true water that makes us never thirst again comes from God. That's right. And speaking of water, how many times do you think water is mentioned in the Bible? Wait, you know all <laughs> trivia, so you probably shouldn't answer. Well, I read ahead. <laughs> 683. I was close before. Yes, but more. 783. Not quite. 782, 781, 70. <laughs> 722 times water is mentioned in the Bible. Oh, it's you right know? there. I could have read the prompter. I'm so glad you didn't. You, sh you need to play at home. Yes. People at home. Okay. <laughs> you know, water is a big deal in the Bible. Not only is it a major topic in that passage in John, living water, it's an ongoing theme all throughout the Bible. The first time water is mentioned in the scriptures is in Genesis 1 2. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters before there was anything, light, sun, or moon, earth, planets, living creatures, or anything else, there was water. And 721 times later, the last time water is mentioned is in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. The Spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come, and let him who thirsts come, whoever desires let him take the water of life freely. In the Bible, God uses water to spread many messages, messages of purification, as we see in Ezekiel 26, 25. One example there, water also sends a message of cleansing. That's found in John 13, 10, among other places. Deliverance and rescue, look in Genesis 7, and blessings from God. Take a look at Isaiah 44, 1 through 3. All of these topics with a united focus of water. Of course, water is needed for daily living. And as the weather warms this summer, staying hydrated is key. Tuesday, or today, we start our first of five health segments with naturopath Dr. Trudy Pieper. And today we focus on the subject of water. Dancy has more. We are entering some of the hottest months. It's yes. hard to believe because as we're recording this, it's not so warm outside. But um, what is so important about getting that drink of water? 
You know, even in the Bible, doc, uh, you know, in Matthew, it talks about, I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I mean, it was important even then that we know how important the, the water is to our bodies. Dehydration is, is a, one of the main reasons that people a lot of times have a headache mm -hmm. or they have fatigue. It's because they do not have enough water in their body. Mm -hmm. As little as 1% of, of, of loss of fluids from your body will make you dehydrated. As much as 9 to 12 percent can kill you. Wow. So that we don't realize how much the fluids meet in our body. You can go two to three, uh, you can go two months with no food, two to three days, and you cannot make it without water. And sometimes we don't even have to feel that thirst either, do we? Well, no, we really don't. If you're feeling thirst, it's probably too late. Okay. That's one of the signs of, that you're dehydrated. Uh, you obviously, all of a sudden you're thirsty and we have a lag time in our bodies. So you, if you feel thirsty, you, all, you obviously need to be drinking water. Mm -hmm. And the amount of water, just by daily activities, breathing, usual bathroom activities, uh, a little bit of moderate exercise or just walking around and we lose three gallons of water a day. So how much should we be drinking then? Um, I'm sorry, three quarts of water a day. Oh, okay. Not gallons, that's a lot. Okay, three yes, quarts yes, of water a day okay. just from daily activities. When you think about it, if you're losing three quarts, you need to replace three quarts. So that for me is always the minimum. But the rule of thumb is six to eight, eight ounce glasses of water a day. For the average person. For the average person. Okay. And that doesn't always necessarily have to be water because people get tired of drinking water. Mm -hmm. That could be juices, anything that's non uh, caffeinated. I was going to say, you're going to have people out there that are going to say, oh, oh, I, you know, just had a couple of big gulps or, you know, um, extra large oh, pops. Yeah. You know? It, it, that won't do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because uh, anything with caffeine dehydrates you. And it, so it's the opposite effect. So someone who has to have a cup of coffee, you better be drinking a cup of water to balance that out because the water, the, the uh, coffee will dehydrate you. And a lack of hydration also affects our blood pressure. Yes. It affects our energy level, as you said. Um, can cause balance issues. It does. Mm -hmm. A lot of times someone gets that slump at three o'clock in the afternoon. I think they need an energy drink. You really just need to drink. Um, people, you know, confuse also hunger with thirst. That's true. The last time if you feel hungry, you're probably just thirsty. It's another sign that when you need to drink, uh, when you get hungry, drink, and that'll solve that problem also. Okay. Some, some tips to help people to drink more, which is hard. It's if first thing in the morning, if you will just chug down some water, mm -hmm. the first thing in the morning, and then the last thing at the end of the day, that will increase the amount of water that you drink. Carry water with you everywhere you go. Um, think about putting a pitcher of water on your uh, counter, with fill it with ice, and a few slices of lemon, lime, orange, strawberries, and anything, anything <laughs> to give it a little flavor and then you'll know at the end of the day you've, you've drank all that pitcher of water and with a little bit of fruit flavoring and it will also help with that. Okay, Dr. Trudy Pieper, thank you so much for the advice. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Well, thank you, Dancy. You know, water is available just about everywhere you look, especially with all the bottled waters on the market. But what are the differences? Today we are going to see if Matt Finkel and Andy Lynch can determine those differences in a blind water taste test. I'm ready. <laughs> They're about to sample artesian, distilled, purified, and spring water varieties, all water labels that are well known on the, on the beverage market. This should be quite the challenge and we know this came about because Andy and I were talking about <laughs> and of course I said that I could do it because I know that when I'm drinking my Poland Spring or my Aquafina I can usually tell. And now I'm about to make a fool of myself in front of all of you because I never thought we'd end up here. Of course with, we're going to end up here. With you should know better. food and water in front of <laughs> So we'll do the best we can. That's right. Or hope, I hope you guys are thirsty. This did come about because Matt claims that he can identify any water that he drinks just by the taste. So good luck to me. Good luck. And Andy, you've, you're along for the ride. I'm along for I'm the kid that in high school, 1997, my senior year, there was a, a new, brand new bottled water machine put in our high school in Pennsylvania, <laughs> right next to the drinking fountain. And I said, oh, I can pay a dollar for water. I can get a free drink. So I'd make fun of the people that did the bottled water. Although we do do more bottled water today. It's, it is some better for you, purified, all that good stuff. And much more common. I know in my own water drinking life, I can certainly tell the difference. I don't know if I can identify the brand like Matt here, I mean, we'll but I can, <laughs> I can tell the difference between purified and spring water this one's and maybe bubbling. some of the other. Should I be concerned? <laughs> is, this, is this drinkable? <laughs> I did inform them they do not have to drink all of the water on set here. Oh, it might good. take a long time. You can see here we have five different water varieties ranging from the artesian to the distilled 
to the spring, to the purified. We've got a wide yeah. variety. You can see the different brands here. We'll go through them. But what we'll do, we'll start with number one. We'll see if you can identify it here, guys. Just take however much you want. Can I know what I'm choosing from? So I know at least multiple choices. We can go through the brands. What we have is Smart Water, which is your distilled water. The Dasani, which of course is purified. Ice Mountain. Fiji, which is your artesian water. And then Aquafina as well. Tastes like water. It does taste like water. How are we going to uh, no give our guess? Because I have a guess. Well, okay, these are our five options here. What would be your guess? I've narrowed it down to either <laughs> Fiji or Dasani. And I'm going to say this is Dasani. Andy? I'll go Fiji just to be different. I have no idea. It is actually neither of the two. Oh, this led me first astray, option yeah, is Aquafina? your Aquafina. And this that is a purified like water here. It's too warm. <laughs> we should have iced them, but you can see this is one of your purified brands, although you're on the right track with the Dasani because that is also a purified it's water. It's like Coke versus Pepsi, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it there is it, Coke versus Pepsi products. Yeah, that yeah. is exactly correct. So this number two, let's see if you can get a little bit closer. You've ruled one out, so only four yeah. options left. Which one? Aquafina's out. Mm. Tap water. <laughs> it tastes, it, that's, that's awful. Why I'm leaning towards... So Nestle? Yeah, no, the, uh, the... Ice Mountain? Ice Mountain. That would be our guess. They all look the same. You both agree on Ice Mountain. The spring water, the only spring water option we have. Actually, incorrect. This is the Fiji artesian Fiji? water. You're failing. Oh, and boy. By, according to my reading on back of the if bottle. I don't like Fiji anymore. It, it doesn't, doesn't taste very good. Yeah, it doesn't it? taste very good. This might taste odd because the back of the bottle says it's, it's flowing over volcanic rock. Oh, I got some volcanic in, rock. <laughs> into an aquifer. <laughs> The so ash we'll in my teeth. Rule that one out. We're only down to three options, yeah. and you guys have not. I'm over two, so I'm not doing just as well. good as I thought. Matt I is not living <laughs> yeah. up to his promise. <laughs> oh boy. Dasani. Any guess? Dasani. I was gonna guess the. Is that Smart Water? Dasani and or Smart Water. Is that your? Why should be the, one it's the middle, middle one, right? Yep. This is smart we water. There we go. All Let's right. go. That is correct. This is the smart water. It is, this is the distilled brand of water. Oh, distilled. Okay. Okay. I, I've never actually tried this. I know a lot of people that have. And, just and, pop that and open really, and chug it. I may yeah, do it after try. this, but this is, you know, very. I didn't think you could looking. drink distilled water. My yeah, grandma yeah. always had a big thing of distilled water on the stove, and that's we weren't allowed to drink it. Well, this does say vapor distilled water and calcium chloride, so maybe that's. That must be the difference. Yeah, the nutrients there. <laughs> Final two options, guys. I know you're looking forward to this bubbly one. Yeah, I'm going to avoid 50 the bubbly one. Here. So we're down to Dasani and Ice Mountain. That's correct. Those are the two I've actually had before. Dasani. I say Ice Mountain. Matt, you are now two for Great. two. Great, I'm coming back. In the last now, two now, now, we, now we know what this is. So. This is Why the, is it bubbling? <laughs> Ice Mountain is the spring water, and this is my personal preference here. That's the your pure, personal preference? Well, the purified water, you That's can taste. It's, cheaper? it's just different. I don't know if it's cheaper or not, but it certainly tastes a lot better. You can get it at Sam's Club pretty cheap, I think. <laughs> well, there you go. Everyone head to Sam's Club. <laughs> the Dasani is kind of bubbly, and I'm not entirely yeah, no, sure why. Why is it bubbling? Dasani is a Coke brand, so maybe they added a little carbonation in there. But I think with Dasani, you can taste the, the purified <laughs> taste of it. What does purified taste like, Zach? <laughs> like Melons? Dasani, I think. <laughs> But hey, if you want to try any of your own taste tests, these are the five options, but there are a wide variety. So Matt got three right. I did Matt better than half. I'm, I'm actually impressed with myself. And without your favorite, Poland Spring. Yeah, no, your if Poland Spring were here, it'd be hands down that second. I don't identify know if we're going to count the last one as he got it right. <laughs> yeah, he didn't really didn't get it wrong. Process by elimination. No, though. that's true. I don't deserve the credit for that one. But I'm happy that I at least got two. Going into this, did you guys have a personal favorite? You said yours were Poland Spring. Was Poland Spring. Vitamin Springs. water, the lemonade kind. I've yeah. said this before. <laughs> Vitamin Waters. water. I, I just need cold water. You know, if it's cold and not the Cavaliers cold water, although <laughs> I'm sure they have good water down in cold water. They probably do. But it needs to be really cold, you know, close to ice. That, that, that's what I like my I also water. use a Brita at home. Do you have? A, you ever helps. use a Brita? We yeah. have before. It's just you know. tap water and right. then it turns right. into drinking water. Right. Yeah. That you is put water. it over the, the volcano in your kitchen <laughs> right. and then it yeah. comes out purified. Exactly. Hey, if you guys have your own <laughs> personal preferences or, or reasons that you go for one water or the other, Always feel free to contact us here. I know Andy would probably love to try all kinds of water. You bet. Matt's our personal professional now, so he can identify any water that you may um, have at home. Always down for a drink of water. <laughs> Maybe you have your own natural spring in the backyard that is flowing over all kinds of rocks. Bring it in for us to try. How would they bring in a natural spring? That'd Isn't be a challenge. It in the ground, Zach? You know, I'm not entirely sure. They I just, sample it in a bottle. I'm really trying to get our oh, viewers I, involved. I in a bottle. Now. I pictured them digging yeah. it out and putting it in the wheelbarrow. That would be tough. And rolling it. I've got a farmer's room. creek in my back. Is it creek or creek? 
That's another segment for another time. <laughs> We're going to get ready to go here. We hope you enjoyed the water segment. Of course, you can always find all of this online at WTLW.com. Mark and Jennifer. I don't think that's artesian or anything in there, but I guess Matt Finkel's got a new nickname now. <laughs> we don't have Poland Springs water. <laughs> that's actually his favorite. We forgot to get that kind. Well, you know, we are very thankful here at TV44 for the growing number of churches who support this ministry, just as they support other mission organizations. This week, we'd like to highlight one of those churches. We've committed to praying for this church and encourage you to do the same as well. Our church in this week's spotlight is the church at Allentown, located at 4900 Allentown Road, just outside the village of Allentown. There's a lot of outreach underway at this church led by Pastor Neil Whitney. Weekly services are Saturdays at 7 p.m. and then Sunday mornings at 9 and 11 a.m. We're thankful for the open hearts of the Church of Allentown. If you'd like more information, call 419-339-2558 or visit their website allentownchurch.org. Well, speaking of churches, a brand new program here on TV44 takes you inside some of the most beautiful Catholic churches in Brooklyn, New York. It's called City of Churches, and the first episode aired this past week. You can enjoy City of Churches right here on TV44, Saturday nights at 7 or Sunday afternoons at 2.30. This unique documentary program explores the variety of church architecture in Brooklyn from a historic context, the significance of how these churches originated, why they were built, their artistic treasures and relics, and the vital relationship with their surrounding communities. That's City of Churches, and let us know what you think of it after you've seen a few episodes. Well, many professional and college sports teams have chaplains that share a word from scripture before games on Sunday mornings. The Indy Racing Car Series is among those that invest in their drivers, race teams, and workers through weekly Sunday morning chapel services. In today's OIO Faith on the Field segment, Andy is at the Indy 500 Chapel Service and talks with the IndyCar chaplain to see how this time every Sunday connects the racing community to God. With Bob Hills of the Indy Chapel Ministry. How long have you been doing this, Bob? Well, I've been around for quite a while, but 2001 <laughs> okay. is really when I began full time and travel wherever the IndyCar Series goes. How special is that to really connect with the drivers wherever they're at, on tour, you know, after an accident, after a loss, after a win? Well, it's, it, we feel privileged and honored, first of all. Uh, we have a lot of great people within our racing family, and uh, it's an honor to be able to serve them and to be able to connect with them uh, wherever we go, wherever in the world that we're at, uh, to be able to minister to them and actually just any way that we can help them and encourage them. What are some of your favorite moments? Wow, that's a tough one. There's been so many. You know, I would say being here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, this is uh, our biggest event. It's the largest sporting uh, event in the world. And we're excited about today because there's going to be so many people here. and. Um, I think the moments that are here, the beginning of this race is unlike anything else in the world. And for me, it's unlike anything else I've ever experienced. To be able to, to see 33 cars come out of turn four, to start the race and go into turn one. Um, beyond that, it's just focused on safety and protection. We want our people to be safe. Mm -hmm. How can you encourage those that may be in the workforce to do ministry where they're at? Everyone needs help. Everyone is struggling. You're helping drivers. How can we reach out? Um, you know, people are amazed. You guys have church at the racetrack or, you know, you guys have Bible studies and stuff. And yeah, we do. So whether, uh, and people said, I don't know, would Jesus be there? And I think I, if you read scripture, you know that Jesus was wherever people were, yeah. uh, in the streets and in the country and, and wherever. And we're that way too. Uh, we're, if you will, a, a congregation without walls. We don't have a building and we meet wherever, sometimes outside, sometimes inside, <laughs> but just take people where they're at and um, love them. Um, sometimes that's real easy, sometimes that's real hard, yeah. but to love them and encourage them. Pretty special what's happening all throughout the Indy Raceway Circuit. Well, thank you, Andy. You know, earlier today, Jennifer and Mark told you about the new program, City of Churches, which you can see right here on TV44 every Saturday and Sunday. Well, starting this week, a special economy program will be airing multiple times. Made in America 2.0, 10 big ideas for saving the United States of America from economic disaster. Author J. Henry Warren gives an overview of his 10 ideas derived from his years as an entrepreneur and president of five American companies. I've been watching the trade deficit build in this country. And it started out in 81, it was very low. Uh, it was the first year we went into a trade deficit from a trade surplus. And uh, 
every year it, it got worse, and that's money that was leaving the country. So I decided about two, two years ago that I'd had it up to about here, and it was time to write down some thoughts that I think the country needs to stem the tide. And it, I don't know if you have noticed in all the news programs, in, in the magazines, in the newspapers, there are a lot of proponents, a lot of people writing about the problems mm -hmm. in this country. And what I wanted to do is not write about the problems, I wanted to write solutions. Watch Made in America 2.0 here on TV44 Sunday, June 8th at 2.30, June 10th at 10 p.m., and June 14th at 12.30 p.m. Well, this is something special that happens about once a year, adding new pavers to TV44's Walk of Honor. And now is the time we are planning to do just that. The Walk of Honor is located right outside our main entrance door, designed first as a way to honor God for His faithfulness to our station, and secondly, as a way to honor those we love. To find out more about this permanent, lasting opportunity, just give us a call here at TV44. For a gift of $500, your favorite Bible verse, loved one's name, or special quote of remembrance can be part of the forever family here at TV44. If you have not had a chance to see this special entrance walk in person, come on by 1844 Beatty Road during regular business hours Monday through Friday, 8 through 4. Jennifer. Thank you, Zach. A good opportunity to enjoy that beautiful walk of honor. Come by our TV station any day and check it out for yourself. Well, hey, you're back. I raced on back from Indianapolis. So. Drank some water. Yeah. You went to Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Now you're back. Yeah, I certainly am. You can how, see how more about Indianapolis and points of life. That's between him and the local law enforcement community. <laughs> then you know there's a high rail system now. It's 20,000 feet above the earth. I did, not, I did not. I did not. I'm the only one that knows about it. <laughs> it's fast. Well, let's move on to talk about the auction, which is coming quickly. If you want to talk about things that are fast, we are accepting donations now. And this is one piece of a set that came in last week, a beautiful, complete china set. Takes me back to my grandma's Thanksgiving dinner, putting the bird on the big plate and all kinds of wonderful serving. There's nothing on it, though. So if you would like to bake the roast to put on the plate, we will have something good to show off. Hey, you know, and speaking of birds, uh, last week you were messing around with these little tiny birds that you didn't think were very valuable. They're worth millions, apparently. I have found, been told they're <laughs> worth like $50 a piece, and we have like eight of them. So if we cut them in half, <laughs> then we can even sell them for more. That would probably hurt the resale value. <laughs> There's something from Solomon about that, I think, in the Bible. <laughs> Well, we certainly invite you to bring your auction donations to TV44 Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Furniture, household items like the china, antiques like those uh, crystal ducks, vehicles, and all that and more for the 2014 TV44 auction, which is coming up September the 6th. We are so looking forward to that. Well, it's almost time to go, but before we do, let's take a moment to focus on some of the prayer requests of the past week and take a moment to pray. An increasing number of requests are coming up about our country. One viewer writes prayer for our nation that is turning away from the Lord. Another is praying for the revival of our country. And while those two things are very important topics, we always want to praise the Lord as well. Several viewers wrote in this past week praising God for salvation and the hope that we have in Jesus. We invite you to share your prayer requests via prayer at WTLW.com. And we're going to take a moment now to pray for these specific things that we just mentioned. Mark, would you pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, and just thank you for the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for the way that you have protected our nation and pray that you continue to do so and just ask for your wisdom uh, for our, our nation's leaders, both civilian and military, uh, domestic and international, federal, local, and state, Lord. To your country, we place it in your hands. In your name we pray. Amen. Don't forget, you can always share your prayer requests with us. Email at w, prayer at WTLW.com or call our prayer line, 419-339-3000. Three other ways to stay in touch with us, find us on Twitter, Mark Kuntz 44, Andy Lynch 44, Jen Beck 44, Matt Finkel 44, or Bauer Z, or on Facebook, Andy Lynch or Jennifer Beck. Also, some extra encouragement is found at WTLW.com with our weekly devotionals. So make sure you check all those things out. Very exciting stuff. You can rewatch editions of Faith and Friends and past shows at our website, WTLW.com as well. And finally today, we leave you with our scripture from the day, focusing again on water, the living water, found in John 4, verses 10 through 14. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. 
Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life talking about water, both the physical attributes of water, but more importantly, the spiritual attributes of water, that our faith in Jesus Christ allows us to never dry up because he is in there working with us, working through us to continue to give that everlasting water. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Hope you have a wonderful week.